much for tuning in to Christie's Science Salon, where you find that the line between physics and fashion is as thin as the ozone layer. It's right, today's glam topic is global warming. Now, I know last week a lot of you liked a pic that I posted about the avocado toast I brought to Becca's dinner, but what you didn't know was that dinner parties can be a hotbed of physics discussions. I mean, we all know you're technically not supposed to discuss controversial topics like religion or politics at the dinner table, but I just had to bring up the ozone layer in connection with my stance on bronzer, which by the way, you want to make sure to put on this line. So we won't need bronzer in a hundred years if we continue to our reliance on fossil fuels and eliminate the barrier between us and solar flares, right? Anywho, Brian and Lindsay, who BT-dub are totes adorbs, brought a vegan cheesecake with raspberry sauce, had the stance that global warming is a left-wing conspiracy theory. So I was like, guys, let's lose the politics and get down to physics. And they were like, OMG, good point. So then I was like, first guys, can we all agree that the presence in the atmosphere of naturally occurring compounds, known as greenhouse gases, maintains Earth's temperature? And Molly was like, obviously. And I was like, and that this year's average global temperature is peaking at 1.38 degrees Celsius above levels experienced in the 19th century. And Phil was like, I'm gonna go on a beer run. Ugh. And then Molly was like, well, all I know is that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, has projected a likely temperature rise of three degrees Celsius in this century, which could cause a dangerous anthropologic interference with climate. Make sure you put your blush on the cheeks. And we all ate our cauliflower mashed potatoes in total agreement. So as you can see, dinner was really, really heating up and then things started to sizzle. Becca was like, um, guys, naturally occurring greenhouse gases caused the earth to be 33 degrees Celsius warmer than if there were no infrared trappings by the atmosphere. So it's clear that if we add even more CO2 with more fossil fuel, we should expect it to increase the overall surface temperature and contribute to the melting of our polar ice caps sooner than later. And I am a big supporter of March of the Penguins. When Phil finally came back, he was all, I don't get it, which is like so Phil. We were like, look, Phil, basically, we're just telling you to monitor your carbon footprint and start looking into a renewable energy source a little more seriously. Then we ate this awesome cheese plate after that. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this sun-kissed look. And speaking of the sun, don't forget that all you have to do to raise the temperature of a dull dinner party is to bring up the greenhouse effect. It's a crowd-pleasing topic that even Phil can understand. Maybe. Until next time, and please subscribe. We can convert sunlight into electricity with a couple of thin silicon wafers in a sandwich. <laughs> a very thin one. For decades, to get a thin piece of pure silicon, we had to saw it off a thick piece of pure silicon. The saw turns a lot of that silicon into dust. This process is fine for making integrated circuit chips for computers or smartphones because the amount of silicon used is so small. Whether or not the water column is mixed can affect organisms living in the environment. Like, if there's no mixing, oxygen is depleted and then the organisms at the bottom will just die. And Shoshana was like, ah, oh, I hate when organisms die from oxygen depletion. And I was like, I know, right?